All right, first trip out in the van in 2024. Looking forward to it. The weather forecast looked promising. In fact, it looked ideal for a bit of photography. So spruced up the van, packed a few bits, and we're going for a one-nighter, bit of photography in the morning, and I'm very much looking forward to it. This video is sponsored by MPB. Absolutely chucking it down. Oh, busy, busy, busy. Right, some lights on, privacy. So as you can see from this weather map, that's us there, that red pin, it's absolutely chucking it down. But if I fast forward through tomorrow, you can see that the rain just kind of comes, passes, and then in the morning, it's not too bad, just the odd showers, mostly cloudy. Now you might be wondering, why is that good for photography? <laughs> well, it is looking very promising, despite all of the rain, cloud, and general gloominess. Because the deciding factor for me, the, one of the most important things I look for is wind. And tomorrow morning, there is virtually none. Whoa! There we go. Whoa, Jesus. So it turns out a great way to burn your van down is to have your gas bottle laying on its side. And that causes all kinds of problems. <laughs> ah, man. Right, we're all right now. Gas bottle's upright and everything, all the burners are working as they should. <laughs> oh, I got a bit of a fright then. For anybody that's worried about two burners in such a small van, I have every single window in here open and the door is also open. So my park up here is, uh, it's actually not a great park up. Oh, okay, I can't eat, that's far too messy to eat and talk. Yes, my park up, it's not the best park up. I'm at a lay-by by a main road. It's not ideal, I'd rather be out in the wilderness, out in the sticks, but, there's a very good reason for me being here. And that is that I don't know where I'm gonna to shoot tomorrow morning. So I'm currently bang in the center of the Lake District. And this area's forecast to be no wind with mist and fog, but I don't know. It can, sometimes comes in pockets and I'm not sure exactly where I want to shoot. So I've positioned myself where I've got phone service so I can keep an eye on the weather because my usual park ups don't get phone service. And in the morning I can get up nice and early and then I can just drive, have a drive around to a few different spots and see how things are developing because with fog and mist in the Lake District, it ebbs and it flows. One valley, nothing. The next valley, pff, unbelievable conditions. So I figure I'll stay central and we'll see what tomorrow morning brings. Play it by ear. Well, there's only so much I can film and talk about in a tiny van in the rain. So I'm gonna just basically get ready for bed, relax, watch a film or something, and then keep my fingers crossed for the conditions tomorrow morning. All right, let's go see what the weather conditions are doing. Well, the mist and fog is not as widespread as I had hoped, but there are pockets, so there's definitely potential. Every now and again, I drive through a patch and it seems to be higher up as well. So, just driving to a location, whoa. <laughs> Just driving to the location I was originally going to sleep at last night. And we'll see how it looks. But yeah, it's looking good. It's a beautiful morning, no wind, and there's been a lot of rain. So there's a lot of flooding and that might open up some potential as well. Here we are.
All right, I've got my first shot of the morning, which is this abstract, intimate shot of the surface of the tarn as it's reflecting the trees above. Now, although the main interest of the image is the reflection of the trees above, that isn't what got my attention. What actually drew me to this spot was all of the water dripping from the branches above and hitting the surface of the water, creating a lovely texture. Yeah, it's not a bad one. I've had to ramp up my ISO to 800 and open my aperture to about f5.6, because otherwise the shutter speed would have been too long and then you lose all of that texture on the surface of the water, which was the initial you know, idea behind the whole shot. So yeah, there we go, not a bad one. Not a bad one to kick off the morning. Oh, just grabbing a quick opportunistic shot. I was walking back to the van and just looked across the lake. And it's beautiful, got a bit of color in the sky, a little bit of mist rolling through to give it atmosphere. Nice reflections. I thought, oh, go on then, we'll grab it. Oh man, well that was a lot of fun. That's what I love about landscape photography. Very quick, spontaneous shot. Um, yeah, really happy with that. So that tarn that I photographed this morning, well, I'm currently walking around the hill that's behind that tarn. You know where all of the mist and fog rolled in for that last photograph that I took there with the long lens? Well, that's where I am now. I'm in that mist and fog. <laughs> so yeah, just exploring, just seeing if we can get any nice compositions with the mist and the trees. It's always a recipe for something beautiful. But we'll see. Yeah, it's absolutely so peaceful as well. So peaceful. Yeah, not sure about that one. I think the fog might have just been a little bit too thick. Putting the 14 to 30 on, almost dropped it. Yep, I think that's a shot. So the reason that I've put my tripod in the water is because I'm framing these lily pads, these decaying earthy brown lily pads, which are gonna anchor the image. They're a foreground anchor, which will lead us through to the misty trees in the background. Beautiful little frame, nice and peaceful, minimalist, just everything I love about photography. Although unfortunately, the, uh, the mist is now turning to drizzle, and that is not good. That could, uh, that could spell the end of this little session, because with this fine drizzle, everything gets soaked and it becomes very difficult to manage. Before we continue, I mustn't forget, because I always do, <laughs> to thank the sponsor of this video, which is MPB. Now, MPB is a place where you can buy, sell, and trade your used camera gear. So if you've got a camera that you're no longer using, well, you can sell it to MPB for free. I've done it myself with a couple of cameras. You just log onto the website, input the details of the camera and the condition that it's in, and then they'll send you a quote. If you're happy with the quote, then they'll then send you a shipping label, box it up, send it off, job done, and they'll pay straight away. 
Now, of course, you don't have to sell them your gear. You can buy gear from them. They've got a ton of kit on their website. Or if you're gonna do that, actually, it might just be worth doing a straight up trade because they also do that. So if you fancy giving that a go, there is a link in the description. That's mpb.com to buy, sell, and trade your used gear. All right, onwards. So I'm close to calling it a day, but there's one more thing I wanna check out. I've had this idea in my head all morning because the water levels are so high. I want to see if Coniston water, which is a big lake, if that water level is high enough to submerge the trees, then I'd love to get a shot of some trees just completely surrounded by water. That's this idea. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if the trees are close enough to the shore of Coniston, and I don't know if the water levels will be high enough, but I've just got this feeling in the back of my mind that something's gonna be going on at Coniston Water to do with the levels being high. It's just a nagging feeling. So I'm gonna drive down there, not too far, and just have a look. It may result in an image, it might not, but I think I'd regret it if I didn't go and check it out, especially considering still the wind has not arrived. It's completely dead out there. The mist seems to be lifting, but we still have beautifully calm conditions. Let's go take a look. Well, the water levels are definitely high, but are they high enough? Is there gonna be a shot? I don't know. I'm gonna jump out and have a quick look. Car park's flooded. So there are lots of trees submerged in the water, but it's, man, it's just chaos. There's nothing orderly. There was no shot there, but I'm really intrigued by this jetty that I'm standing on. It's about eight inches beneath the water. Um, and yeah, this this is uh, this is something I'd like to photograph, but unfortunately, this jetty doesn't work because you can see it leads you into this here, just this uh, sort of messy area. So, yeah, what I might do, I might see if I can find another jetty. So, uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe my thinking has switched from trees submerged in water to uh, jetties and piers submerged in water. Look at this as well cool boat there but it's kind of like crashed into all these bushes so ah lovely beautiful but not a shot not here anyway okay let's go see if we can find ourselves a jetty well a better jetty than that one anyway that we just saw oh i'm excited So I'm driving down the side of Lake Coniston and so far I've seen one jetty and it was perfect, but it was private property. That's the problem with this country is so much of it is private property, you just can't access it. So I was devastated, but we're continuing on, determined to find a submerged jetty to photograph. There's gotta be some down here, man. It's just, ah, oh, it's such a nice day. Oh. oh, it's game on, game on. <laughs> we have, oh, we're on here. Oh, this looks, can I park here? Uh, yeah, I'm blocking a gate. No parking access required, that's okay. We'll park over here. Oh. All right. Oh yes, I reckon we've got a shot to finish this video. Let's go. Well, this is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Although not the easiest to shoot, or certainly not the easiest area to work in. <laughs> Every time I move, it disturbs the water. So I've just put on a filter, an ND filter, a six stop, just to see if we can get a longer exposure and just flatten everything down. Cause this is gonna be such a 
fine art minimalist. There's no other way to describe it. <laughs> so my composition is exactly how you would expect it to be, straight down the middle of the jetty. But I'm having to bracket because we've got a beautiful bit of side light coming in. The sky's just opening up, so we've got a bit of light, still lots of haze and atmosphere. So it's such an atmospheric scene and oh, it's just fantastic. But because the sky's so bright, especially off to the left, I don't want to blow those highlights. So just playing it cautiously, just going for a bracket, exposing for the jetty and the darker areas of the scene, and then that bright sky over to the left side. Probably won't need to use both images, but I tell you what, I don't want to mess this up. So at the minute, I'm just playing around with different levels of polarization. So you need a polarizer so you can see through the water and see that there is a jetty beneath. But if the polarization is too strong, then I feel like the bottom of the image is far too dark. Um, so by lifting the, or you know, reducing the polarization, then you introduce more contrast as the water becomes brighter at the base of the image. So you get a contrast between the hosts of the jetty and the bright water, but then you can still see a hint of the jetty beneath. So yeah, with a polarizer, it's, uh, it's not a case of all or nothing. It's just feathering it to get it right. I can't get over how good the light is right now. It's, oh, it's so nice. Well, that's it. That's the light gone. <laughs> and I am a very happy photographer right now. That is a great way to end what is the first photo shoot for me of 2024.